In the name of God, who is our great giver. Amen. So I'm wondering what the best present, the greatest gift that you have received, that you've been given. Best present. The what? A ukulele. Yay. Uh, where's the, where, uh, you're not in the folk group here. <laughs> Anyone else? The greatest present, best present. Your children. Your husband. Mama. My wife. There, Heather. There's something about all of these, even the ukulele, which is an object, right? But it is meant to be played, meant to be interacted with. So the best gifts, the best presents are usually have breath, are alive, and initiate or are part of relationship. Music. Did you know there are some presents, there are some presents that are so big that nobody really notices them? They're so huge that they're hard to see. And so the only way to know about them is to go back, clear back to the beginning. Or maybe a little before the beginning. Because in the beginning, in the beginning there was, well, in the beginning there wasn't very much. Nothing. Except perhaps an enormous smile. But there was no one there to see it. There was no one there to see it. And then, and then God gave the gift of light. So there was dark and there was light. And God called it good. And then God gave the gift of water and and dry land and and the gift of sky and the gift of creatures that fly in the sky and the gift of creatures that swim in the waters. And God called it good. And God gave the gift of, of green plants and the gift of creatures that crawl on their bellies and the gift of four-legged creatures and, and two-legged creatures like you and me, and God called all of it good, very, very good. And God gave the gift of rest and and time to enjoy all of these great gifts. A time to enjoy them so much that we overflow with thanksgiving and praise. Which is what we do here. This is our gift. A gift from God. A sacred time just to gather and to recognize and to enjoy and give thanks for all the great gifts with which we have been blessed. Now, when people got into a great deal of trouble with one another and with the rest of the creatures and the water and the plants and just got mixed up about what was good and what was not good, God sent prophets to try to help sort things out. And finally, he sent his own son, Jesus, to live and to die as one of us, to eat with us, to pray with us, to heal us, to tell us stories about God and about the way to happiness, the way of giving, the way of the gifts, and the way of the giver, and the way of the gifts. And so finally, Jesus became that great story, you know, the great story which has been going on from the very beginning, 
the great story of giving. He gave his life, his body broken on the cross, and his blood shed for the forgiveness of sin, for the healing of the world, for restoring us to life. And he descended into the very depths of hell to give those souls the gift of restoration. And he rose into new life, the life of new creation, and returned into God. And then the giving continued. The giving continues. The great gift of the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who animates the church and us and who encourages us and and who challenges us and who gives us wisdom and understanding beyond our natural capabilities, who gifts us with the gifts of healing and study and hospitality and wise administration and charity and generosity and thanksgiving. The great gift of the Holy Spirit is at the heart, the very heart, the beating heart of our worship, bringing the body and the blood of our Lord into our very midst so that we too can be blessed and sent out to participate in this great life of giving. So I put into your bulletins, and if you're at home, you can download a bulletin or you can look this up on your phone. I put into your bulletin an illustration of a parabola. Now, if you're an engineer or a mathematician, and I know we have some of you among us, I beg your forgiveness from the outset. (laughs) Because I cannot go into the weeds, nor would you want me to go into the weeds, of the mathematical and engineering marvels of this geometric shape. But in very layman's terms, a parabola is a U-shaped, is U-shaped, either downward or upward, and symmetrical. It's an open oval held firmly on each side. It is incredibly strong. I mean, think of the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge is a parabola. It's very, you know, extended. The, The cables that hold up, that hold hundreds of thousands of pounds passing by every hour, Those cables are a parabola. And I offer it to you this morning as an illustration of this great life of giving into which we are commissioned. Our beginning and our ending held firmly in place. That parabola is firmly planted on each side. It's not just an oval hanging there with nothing you know, supporting it. Each side firmly held. Our beginning and our end are held firmly in the great Lord of all creation who loves us, who created us, and who sustains us. And we walk through life sometimes in joy and sometimes in pain and sorrow. But we can walk in trust because Jesus has been given to us as the way. We are held and guided by the Holy Spirit. And we come from and are going into God's great eternal heart. And because we can walk securely in this awareness, we have the freedom of heart and mind to join God in this great ongoing act of giving. Of open-handed, generous giving. And so one of our fundamental, I talked last week about the fundamental spiritual practice of curiosity and wonder. And this week, the fundamental spiritual practice of giving our time, our talent, and our resources to help others, to sustain others in their weary times. And offering our time and talent and resources to sustain God's great gift of the church, in which the word of God is preached and the sacrament of Jesus are offered. And so before we, we have a new ministry called Helping Hands, a gift of a, a ministry of giving, we're going to commission and bless them. But before we do that, I want to uh, 
end with this prayer, this great Thanksgiving prayer. So please join with me. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for all your goodness and, and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you now for our creation, for our preservation, and for all the blessings of this life. But above all, we bless you and thank you for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and we bless you for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by walking before you and by giving up ourselves to your service and walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen.